Yo, what's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're checking out iOS 15. But by now you've already seen the huge FaceTime upgrades like being able to share audio. You've seen that like in the Maps app, everything looks really nice now. I mean, there's a ton of changes in iOS 15 that are fun, right? But I wanna look a little bit deeper. I wanna go check out the deep cuts of iOS 15 and show you over 50 new hidden features and changes that I bet you don't know about. So if you're excited for today's video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe so you're always staying up to date on the latest Apple news. And let's go ahead and get started with number one. All right, so starting off hot here, you can drag and drop system wide. So tap and hold to grab this link. And now I'm just on the home screen, you know, I'm chilling out here. I can go to Tweetbot, which is my Twitter app, start up a new tweet and drop it in here. And there's the link. It's drag and drop. Like it feels like you're kind of on a Mac now. It's an incredible feature and they didn't talk about this at all. Like drag and drop is, is huge. Next up inside of FaceTime, obviously Apple made some big improvements here, but two of the smaller ones that I find incredibly useful are one, being able to know when you're muted. So your phone will tell you if you're muted and you're talking. So this is the notification right here, whatever you're muted. I just FaceTime my friend and, uh, and it shows you like, oh, hey, you're muted. Hey, whatever, you're in a video. And for the back camera, whenever you're here, you can now, my friend's being real annoying. He doesn't need to be talking right now. You could actually do this to switch zooms and go from 1X to 2X, which is really cool. So you can finally like zoom in on stuff if you're using something like the iPhone 12 Pro. Next up for emojis, there's a couple of changes as well. If we go over to like the eye section, you can now do two different color eyes, which is actually, that, that actually makes sense because like the people actually have colored eyes, you know. I do have some questions about some of these, uh, I don't know. Some of these are a bit out of control if you ask me. And also from emoji, if you're a glasses wearer like myself, there are new heart, star, and then retro shaped glasses. So you can throw those in there, make your little make your little emoji guy look I mean, look at him, he's, he's, a, he's got a cute. Next up inside of maps, if you're used to zooming out, you're probably just used to seeing like this, you know, the world, and then it just goes across and you can see. But now when you zoom all the way out, there's this really cool new globe view and there's even stars in the background, which looks really sick. They did a good job with this one. I mean, honestly, the world's kind of cool, guys. Like, this is where we live. It's kind of dope. And Apple has allowed me to experience this. I mean, I feel like I'm basically in space right now. You'll also notice right down here that there is a profile where you can set favorites, save guides, report things, and even rate them as well as change all of your preferences, which will open up a larger panel right here. But probably most crazy is that when you get directions to somewhere, sometimes you'll be able to use AR walking directions in certain cities. Now it's not gonna be everywhere, but like getting off the transit in like New York, for example, it might actually tell you which way to go. I remember this being concepted for years and I haven't been able to get that working just yet because you know, I'm not in those areas just yet but it is coming in iOS 15. Next up, jumping over to Safari, couple of things I wanna show you here. So first up, swiping through tabs is super easy. Um, because of the redesign, you can now do this. So go left, go right, just like you can with apps more broadly on the iPhone, and you can make a new tab just by swiping right. So you'll be here, you go to the best blog ever, Apple Track, well, you know, it's my size, it's pretty sick, and then you just swipe over like on the tab view when it shows up and you're into a new web browsing page. Second up here, when you actually go to this section, there's a new voice search. So you can tap and talk to your phone and it does it super quickly actually, and then you can search. And it also improves security by always defaulting to the HTTPS version of a website. Of course, my website is pre-optimized for the best security, but if a website would offer like both versions for some reason, it will automatically redirect you to HTTPS, so browsing is more secure. In photos, I'm sure you've seen this one already because it is one of the bigger upgrades, but you can search photo text. So like if there's writing in a painting or something that you wanna capture, you tap on this icon right here, and it will actually automatically highlight and make it just fully searchable by going back and forth here. It's it's pretty miraculous. I don't know how they've done it, but this is legitimately impressive. And while we're in the Photos app, if you swipe down on a photo now, there is a ton of additional data giving you exactly what camera, the millimeter lake, the f-stop. It's pretty impressive. And you can see like the date and time here. This is also new. You can adjust the date and time to whenever you want. If I wanna say it was this day, 
I mean, I, I don't because, you know, that would that would change the, the memory. But if you wanted to change a photo, if it had the wrong date or something and just defaulted to today when you imported it, you can now do that straight again on your iPhone with no computer necessary. And of course, one of the coolest widgets introduced with iOS 14 is the Photos widget. But sometimes there's people that you might not want to see recommended there all the time. Maybe someone that just passed away, an ex. Like, I don't know what it is about my phone, but it just keeps recommending pictures of my ex incessantly. And like, we're cool. You know, we're on good terms. It's just like, maybe I don't wanna see this person every day. So you can actually tap here and then scroll down just a little bit and it will say, feature this person less. And now the, the WWDC girl, <laughs> it'll show you these two things, never show or just like don't show them a lot. Let's say WWDC girl, I'm sorry. You've broken my heart and it's time to go. Now they're not gonna show up ever in featured areas, which is great. Next up, you guys all know you can swipe down to get to spotlight search, but now you can access it from the lock screen and also notification center. You can just swipe down and new in iOS 15 as well. You could search for apps in here as well. So if I was like, hey, I wanna download this game. It knows I've already downloaded this. You can just tap on that icon and this is installing on your iPhone directly from Spotlight without you ever having to go to the app store or even leave your lock screen. Like you can download and install apps from the lock screen now, which is just kind of insane. Inside of the health app, Apple has introduced new walking steadiness data points and also tracking. So you can actually like not only find exercises built in here now to do this and basically help you be less likely to fall. There's also a new feature in health that allows you to store your immunization record for like COVID-19 or immunizations in general. I haven't been able to find it yet because like I'm vaxxed, I love it out here and I'm trying to store it in here. I've just looked everywhere and I can't find it. Next up inside of the mail app, when you open it for the first time, Apple's introduced mail privacy protection, which is super great because it protects all men. Again, okay, that was a bad joke. Mail, okay, let's just move on. Basically what this does is allow people to track you less. This is great because it'll help hide your IP address and not allow people to put hidden things in the email that will say when or if you've ever opened it. This is really cool that Apple's like building this native to the iPhone because there's a lot of third-party apps that do this, but seeing it native in, in the mail app I use is fantastic. And of course, I did enable. And going alongside that, there's also a brand new mailbox widget. So you can see emails on your home screen now, which is phenomenal. Like this is something people have wanted since widgets came out and it may have taken Apple a year, but check your widgets on iOS 15. You can see those emails all day long. Now, as a shock to everyone, including myself, I can confidently say that Siri has actually gotten better this year. She's better in context. She's also faster. So like watch this, just a general query. How's the weather in Cupertino? It's pretty good. Like, you know, just marginally faster in that case. But what Apple has also added is offline Siri. So Siri can do things that she couldn't even do before, like set a timer offline. Set my timer for 15 minutes. And you can see it's instant. Like there's no delay. It doesn't go to the clock app. It just starts the timer like that. And then of course you can go in and cancel it if you'd like to. But by far the coolest Siri upgrade to me is her starting to understand context better. So in a place like the phone app, you would normally have to say, you know, the trigger phrase, you know, call Jimmy John Sandy or the person's name. Hey, it's just a made up contact. We're having fun out here. Now you can just say, can you call this person? and it will actually start dialing their phone number because I didn't say their name or even give context, but Siri knew on this page, we're talking to Jimmy John Sandy, okay? And we wanna make a call right now. It's really cool. Next up for accessibility, Apple has made the magnifying app a default application on your iPhone now. It's no longer something that is like extra or an add-on. And if you actually go into accessibility settings, there's been a couple of changes here. First of all, Apple says you'll be able to adjust display and text size on a per app basis now. And if you scroll down to audio visual and then tap on background sounds, Apple now has built in background noises like rain or ocean or stream, bright noise, dark noise, balanced. This is all built into your iPhone now. I know probably for some of you, you used to have a separate app to do this to help you fall asleep or just to use throughout the day. Now this is built in straight to your iPhone, which is insane. Next up for widgets, Apple's added a couple of new ones they didn't mention at the keynote. First for App Store, there's a couple of different sizes right here that will show you the topical events. We already talked about mail. There's a new Find My One as well, which will show you the location of people or items that you care about and also Game Center. Game Center's here too. This is probably one that's not gonna be used, but man, I mean, if that's not a pretty widget, I don't know what is. 
Like that's just a good looking widget. Can we give Apple a shout out for that being a good looking widget? Best hidden feature of them all. Next up in Apple Pay and Wallet, there have been a couple of changes here. For example, Apple Pay has been completely redesigned. Obviously I have to blur all of this out because it's my sensitive info, but you can see it takes the more like card segmented design that a lot of the rest of iOS 15 has. And I think it looks absolutely great. Plus you can add cards to Apple Pay directly in the payment flow now. So you no longer have to go like through setup. It's just in the Apple Pay flow, you can add a card. And inside of the wallet app, when you're viewing your Apple card to view the number, you tap on this right here and then it'll ask you for face ID. And I'm not gonna authenticate because I don't want you guys to steal my credit card. But you can see right here that the button's there and you can go right to that number now. Next up in the books app, the search section has been redesigned. It also has search that auto completes now. So if you would type in, you know, a great novel like Harry Potter, you know, it's going to auto complete these things and it'll even suggest books that you might be interested in downloading. Before the search was definitely quite lackluster, although admittedly I, I don't use the books app often at all. If you are using an iPhone 12, when you update to iOS 15, you're getting an upgraded panoramic mode that'll do better at not distorting or like messing up the image if people are moving in it. Apple didn't say why that's iPhone 12 specific, but it is. So that's a cool feature that you get if you bought one of the newest iPhones and quick take video, you know, you press and hold to do that you can now zoom with one finger just like Snapchat. So if you wanna do that quick video, even being able to lock it right now, you can do that with your phone on iOS 15, which is actually really handy. Like I rarely like taking videos like this, but I mean, this is kind of invaluable for a quick vid. And also for the newest iPhone 12 models, Apple is upgrading the 5G connectivity so more system services can take advantage of 5G in times when you are getting those faster speeds. On top of the fact that there's going to be a setting where you can prefer 5G over Wi-Fi. So if your Wi-Fi at home isn't great, but your 5G coverage is better, it will actually use your iPhone's 5G antenna for data rather than the Wi-Fi signal that it's connected to. Next up, if you have a home security camera that supports HomeKit secure video, you can actually get notifications when a package is being delivered now. Apple has some crazy new tech in here that will detect like a box being delivered to your door and they will send you a push notification through the Home app of, hey, there's a package that just got delivered using HomeKit secure video and the data they got from it. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Do I wanna get a HomeKit security camera? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of do. I want to know when packages are coming. Next up, when you're editing text like this in iOS 15, you'll say, okay, everything from the keyboard to the cursor looks identical, but there have been a couple of major upgrades between the keyboard and text navigation. First of all, guys, the magnifying glass is back. When you want to get into the nitty gritty, it pops back up again so you're not completely blocking it where your finger's at, it's so nice, it's so good. We got to give it a huge round of applause for that. And for the keyboard, dictation, it now happens on device. So you're gonna notice it is significantly more responsive than before. And for the first time since I think dictation has been a feature, there is no time limit. You can use on device dictation for way longer than 60 seconds, which is what it was at previously. And you can see it's pretty good. Like I'm genuinely impressed by this on device. It's not taking time from a, a ping in an Apple server. It's genuinely awesome. And again, you'd never know this. Apple didn't talk about it but it is significantly upgraded. This is the new keyboard and cursor stuff in iOS 15. And another godsend, the date and time picker is back. You no longer just have to scroll up here. In fact, they've removed the ability to do so. Now when you tap on a time or a date, it's just real easy. They got rid of it in iOS 14. Everybody was like, this is weird. Why would they have done this? And you know, they realized their mistake. It's back now. Inside of the news app, honestly, I don't use it this often, but they've also given it like the iOS 15 card redesign. So you can see it's a, it's a lot nicer looking. It actually looks a bit more segmented and falls into line with the rest of iOS 15's design language. Again, I'm a huge fan. I think it looks hot. This year, more than ever before, Apple is working to make the notes app more like Google Docs. This is me trying to type and talk at the same time and that's what we got honestly pretty impressed so here in iOS 15 you've got the ability to now add tags for the first time so you can do like a hashtag hello and you can see it automatically highlights it as a tag that will now be searchable in all of your notes you can also at mention people for the first time so I don't know if it'll work because there's nobody else shared in this document but if you have a shared note between people you can at someone now and then see a list of the changes and a rundown view so everybody knows what's going on next up for software updates Apple has introduced the ability to delay updates and stay on the old version of iOS so you know how like when iOS 15 will come out a bunch of your phones will update overnight because of automatic updates and some of you might have important apps that could break because of that well Apple's now recognized this and there's going to be a new 
pop-up down here that gives you the option if you wanna go upgrade to iOS 15 or get bug fix updates for iOS 14. Yeah, for the first time ever, Apple's gonna allow you to stay on iOS 14, continue to get bug fix updates even on a newer device, and delay updating if it's not the right time for you. Of course, another complaint that Apple has never addressed is for iCloud storage. You can see they got me hooked up here real good to the two terabyte iCloud plan. Every iPhone user gets five gigabytes for free across all of their devices with the Apple ID. It doesn't even get like five per device, which would be a much wetter way to do it. And that's obviously caused issues whenever you wanna change phones you know, you don't have anywhere to back up your stuff. That being said with iOS 15, Apple is now going to give you unlimited iCloud backup storage for three weeks if you are transitioning phones. So this is gonna allow you to get all your phone data from here to your new phone without paying them a cent extra. I mean, that was like the main reason I think a lot of people wanted iCloud was for backups. And the fact that Apple is offering like unironically unlimited storage is pretty insane. Now following that, Apple added the Translate app in iOS 14, but a lot of people just kind of forgot about its existence. So now Apple has baked it into the operating system. I mean, like it's always been there, but you can see you can translate on demand like so which is great, you know, Chinese is not yet supported by Translate, but uh, you can choose some of the languages that are. I thought, is this not a... Okay, well, there we go. It just didn't detect it automatically. So you get that built in now. And there's actually this really cool new conversation tab and this thing called face-to-face -face view where you could set this on a table. I could be talking in one language. It spits it out in like Chinese or German. Then they would talk back in their native language and it would spit it back, which is really cool because you could literally set this down and hold the phone and each be pressing your little microphones. It's one of these weird interfaces where you're like, well, is this a mistake? No, this is by design and the design is brilliant. And finally, inside of the Voice Memos app, there are some fresh options here. First of all, adjusting the playback speed. If you want this to be hella fast, I don't even know what this is. This is just me playing guitar and singing and vibing. It's a good time. You can put it back to the normal speed and it'll actually show you uh, which direction you went and how far and skip silence. So it will remove silences that the app detects from your recordings, which can be really helpful if you like left it on, but there was some gold in the middle or something. So this is iOS 15 guys. I hope you enjoyed these hidden features. It's kind of insane always how much Apple packs in here they just don't tell you about. But anyway, I hope you guys learned something new in this video. Let me know what your favorite hidden feature was down below. Honestly, the translate stuff is really cool, but I think the tabs in Safari, like being able to just go back and forth, that's so, so handy. And then start a new tab by just keep swiping. All right, it's great. Anyway, guys, this is iOS 15, hidden features, 50 plus things I bet you didn't know before. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, hit subscribe for more, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.